Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just bless him. And say, Lord, you are faithful. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Lord, you will change me tonight. Pray and say, Lord, let there be a new level. Open my eyes to something. That I didn't just come to watch people or get excited. But I came to receive what is able to change my life. Bless his name. Make sure you are praying. Inside, outside. Jesus is Lord. Father, we bless you. Can you go ahead and express yourself in the spirit for a few minutes? Maga brando kafre de kos ge brende kola praste frazime lene bosh. Zaka paro kapari anda kabala da bakare bosh. Mam preste bariada bosh. But ye building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. Shi ba 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 ba. We draw strength from the Spirit. We draw grace from the Spirit. Building yourselves like an edifice on your most holy faith. Enlarging your capacity to believe God and to believe spiritual things. Send the prakate baladabos, rakata baka barakate baladabos. But we speak this wisdom among them that are mature, even the hidden wisdom of God that none of the princes knew. For had they known this, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him but the spirit of God has revealed it unto us for he searched all things yea the deep things of God hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord Every time you come before God's presence, it's important to come with an expectation. It's easy to get familiar with God's presence. Hallelujah. Your respect and honor for God's presence is not automatic. It takes a conscious cooperation on your own part. To realize that every time you show up before him, he has something new for you. Hallelujah. It is that revelation and that consciousness that keeps you. So that no matter how much of him you know and you see, there will be a longing from within for more of him. Tonight, Lord, show us something we have not seen before. Teach us your way. We humble ourselves in the name of the Lord Jesus. Spirit of truth, we give you free access. And we pray that you bless us. Change us transform us we are that army we are that victorious generation the ones who will bring glory and grace to your name the ones who will lift up the banner of your righteousness of your grace of your power and 
and of your wisdom to the nations. Lord, we declare that tonight you will visit us in a way. In the name of Jesus, let there be a reign of revelation, reign of insight. Challenge us, build us, equip us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Revelations 19, 18. Revelations 18, quickly. I hope you came with your Bible. Hallelujah. Many of you who don't come to church with your Bibles, please repent tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, and be ye not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not her plagues. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto the heavens, and God had remembered her iniquities. Lord, we pray tonight that you bless us. Let your word come alive. Let your word transform us in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly, be seated. God bless you. Please pick up your Bibles. I'll be examining a very important topic. We're starting a new series. Hallelujah. It's our desire that as believers, we be grounded and established in truth. Paul prayed for the church and he said that they be built, they be grounded, and they be established in truth. This is what spiritual growth is all about. Spiritual growth is not just about praying in tongues or laying hands and getting people up. The Bible calls those things the basic things of the kingdom, the doctrines of the laying on of hands and all of these things. But there is a higher call. There is a higher realm. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we be built we be rooted or grounded then be established in the truth hallelujah that's why the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers pastors evangelists for the edification the perfection the building up not for tradition and jamboree for the building up of the saints that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. That we all as the body of Christ will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not being tossed through and fro, the Bible says, by every wind of doctrine. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough for us to see miracles and to see the manifestations of the spirit if you build your life and your faith upon just miracles and the manifestations of god as good as that is they are signs hallelujah and our faith must be built on a sure foundation the bible says he that hears my words and doeth them is compared to he that builds his house on a rock dig deep and build his house on a rock the bible says the wind came and all kinds of things came but he was unshakable but the one that built his house on sand and let me tell you something the body of christ has many sands in which believers are building their faith upon and our goal is that every one of us comes to a point where we are established in christ that we know him paul said but i know whom i have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able. That's what it means to be a strong Christian. To be a strong Christian does not just mean one who has the ability to pray four or five hours. Wonderful. It's not just one who has the ability to fast for 100 days. Wonderful. Not just one who has the ability to quote scriptures or be in ministry or walk in the miraculous. These things are good elements of spiritual growth. But there is a level of steadfastness establishment where you are grounded in the truth hallelujah where you know the lord 
the bible says let the rich man not glory in his riches let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength but let him that glory had glory in this that he knoweth and understanded me this is the pride of the believer that you know the lord beyond religion beyond quoting scriptures hallelujah the church has been weak and beggarly primarily because the ministers have not been able to bring the church to a place of strength and maturity where every believer knows God and has a testimony and a track record of a personal work with God beyond the boundaries of ministry. Your knowledge of God should not be just the God of Joshua Selman or the God of Koinonia. There is a name that must come out of your experience with God. Hallelujah. The saints of old encountered God in practical ways and they named God after the residue of their experience with him. And while it is good to know him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God of all the men of God in this country, it's time you develop an experience of being established in the person and the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Because when you know him, you will experience the fullness of him. And this has been my passion for years. To bring believers to a point where we know the Lord. Hallelujah. For they that know their God, Daniel 11, 32 b, they shall be strong and they are the ones who will do exploits. Not the Christians. They that know their God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, Oh king, we will not be careful to speak to you in this matter. He said, Our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, I will not bow to you. That's a revelation of God. The reason why the spirituality of many people and of the church in Nigeria is very slippery and very basic is because we have not contended for a greater knowledge of God. The knowledge of his ways, his principles, his character and his person. And this becomes our only hope for a victorious life. Hallelujah. I hope you have a passion to know God. To know him. Beyond the things that he can give you. Beyond marriage, beyond money, beyond friends, beyond a good CGPA. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelations 18 how that the kings of the earth had in, intermingled with Babylon. And there was a call in verse 5. 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. That means God is calling a kind of people. Come out of her. My people. It says, That be, ye be not partakers of her sins hallelujah let me show you something very interesting tonight i want to challenge your second timothy second timothy chapter three paul is speaking here tonight i'm speaking on the apostate church the apostate church we're examining the concept of apostasy in the body of Christ apostasy talks of a deviation from the truth it talks of the error of shifting and drifting away from the original principles of God and it will shock you as I reveal some things to you that happen in the body of Christ it is so important bless God for being alive to listen to this message tonight hallelujah Paul speaks about a generation and a time in the church age where there will be a reign there will be a prevalent manifestation of what he calls apostasy read on second timothy he was charging his son in the gospel timothy that he be established in truth and be a faithful bishop over the churches around verse one this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come 
this is a portrait of the apostate church for men shall be lovers of their own selves i want to paint the picture of the nigerian church for you and help me confirm whether or not i'm lying covetous boasters proud blasphemous disobedient to parents unthankful unholy verse 3 without natural affection gay marriage all kinds of madness that goes on truth breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god having a form of godliness going to church wearing nice suits having ushers and protocols standing having a form having bibles in their homes having ipads and ipods and all kinds of things browsing through scripture having a form of godliness say but denying its power from such turn away verse 6 for of this sort there are those who creep into houses house prophets marching from house to house telling every house the problem they have in the world and leading captive silly women laden with sins led away with various lusts ever learning bible studies on sunday prayer meeting in the night self fellowship on monday miracle service on tuesday deliverance service on wednesday word exposition and encounter on thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth now as Janice and Jembers withstood Moses so this also resist the truth amazing that in the church of God the truth is resisted men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further this is the judgment of God upon these ones for their folly shall be manifest unto all men and theirs also was he said but thou hast fully known my doctrine this is paul speaking my manner of life my purpose my faith my long suffering my charity my patience hallelujah 11 persecutions afflictions which came unto me in antioch and all of that verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ shall suffer persecution and then 13 but evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let's read that verse together verse 13 one to read but evil men and seducers shall become what worse and worse deceiving people and they themselves being deceived but this is the encouragement to the true church 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus 16 he said for all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof number three for correction number four for instruction in righteousness that the man of god the next verse may be what perfect the word perfect there is mature thoroughly furnished the purpose of scripture and the dealings of God with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature established grounded built up in the knowledge of God 
the apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of Christ the Bible says ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein unfortunately what we call the ancient part is not what God calls the ancient part because what we call the ancient part is the traditions and religiosity of men and of denominations that also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church hallelujah are you listening to me tonight if you came here to be blessed if you came here to know the lord if you came here to shake out the things that cause the great to fall then welcome to this message tonight you must be able to open your spirit to receive for in receiving the word it will cause you to be established in truth hallelujah there are all kinds of apostasy in our church every kind of activity the bible makes us to understand the the next series that we're stepping into we will be examining the book of revelations hallelujah we're going to be opening up the book of revelations the word revelation comes from a latin word revelatio and the greek is apocalypsis that means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden hallelujah it was a revelation of christ jesus as revealed to john a little bible history about john the bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain roman emperors began to strike against the church of christ and the first of them in bible history is called emperor nero he was a wicked and a hostile man hallelujah came to a point where they persecuted the church to a point that there was a field like a football field and they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom many were thrown into the den of lions many were dragged in carts. hallelujah it was during that time that paul and peter paul was about to be crucified and bible history tells us that paul was about to be crucified the exact same way jesus was crucified and paul said he was not worthy he said they should turn him upside down and they turned him upside down and crucified him hallelujah and then after emperor nero one called domitio the next emperor he came in and paraded himself to be god and to be lord to a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children he wanted everybody to call him lord and god so when john the beloved the one who jesus loved when he began to preach about christ in the city of ephesus he began to talk about the counsel of god talk about the mysteries of the kingdom the divine life and the reality of the lordship of christ it was a real threat to the emperor hallelujah and then they caught john and paraded the people and they boiled hot oil and they threw john in it suddenly john entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him he moved freely through that hot oil and they were amazed what manner what dimension of the spirit what knowledge of god did this man have and as a result of that he was banished to the island that we call patmos revelations chapter one help us oh god to be the true church the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass and he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant john who bore witness of the word of god and of the testimony of jesus christ and all things that he saw and there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in revelations and john wrote to the seven churches i'm driving somewhere hallelujah now you must understand that the way the book of revelation was was um 
was broken he told him write the things that were the things that are and the things that shall happen after hallelujah the things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age the things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches there were truly seven churches in asia minor all of the churches smyrna laodicea and all of pagamos all of those churches they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in asia but then prophetically every one of those churches was a representation and a type a dispensation of different ages in the church age are you following me now and so he began to write to the churches and you would hear the lord commend the churches i commend you over this and that and that however i have a problem hallelujah god had a burden because the church of christ although they were walking in grace although they were walking in power certain men began to come in orchestrated by satan himself and if they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of christ are you following me now this is one of the traits there are many doctrines hear me that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing they teach it they write books about it these are erroneous doctrines that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon are you listening to me one of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in revelation chapter 2 and paul called it the doctrine of the laodiceans the laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine another was called the doctrine of balaam different kinds of doctrines and let me tell you something the church of christ needs rapid emergency attention otherwise the way we are going to the church of christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of god has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up and they will receive a rude shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of balaam there's no time but do you know balaam balaam was a prophet balaam was a true prophet balak called him and said he should curse the nation of israel and he repeatedly wanted to make attempts but the lord stopped him you know why because the nation of israel were a sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people
Are you getting blessed tonight? I came to challenge you tonight. And then, for the men of God in this country, we have a special, let me show you something. Jeremiah 23. I wish every pastor, prophet, bishop, pope, brother, whatever that names the name of Christ will sit and read this scripture. Are you ready? Let's read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 9. Jeremiah 23, verse 9. Verse 1, and then we'll go to verse 9. Are you there? Want to read? Woe be unto who? Stop. Who is speaking? God is speaking through the prophet. He said, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture. Woe unto the pastors. That means there are pastors. There are men and women of God. They own parishes. They own churches. You watch them on TV. It says they destroy and they scatter the sheep. Verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Now you must understand when the Bible talks of prophets, in ancient time there were no apostles. Are you listening to me? Why? Because Christ has not been risen. One of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter Jesus Christ face to face. So the apostolic ministry was also incorporated. And so the prophets function both in the apostolic and the prophetic office. They were the only ones who God could use to communicate his counsel to the people. The priests barely mediated between the God and the people in terms of sacrifice. So when he talks about prophets there, don't smile and say I was sleeping and I saw evangelists under my name. You belong to that category and it's important to listen. He said my heart within me is broken. Because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. And like a man whom with wine had overcome. Because of the Lord. And because of the words of his holiness. This is the prophet speaking. His reaction to the anger. And the tenacity with which God was using to speak. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing. The land mourneth. And pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And their cause is evil. And their force is not right. It looks to me like Nigeria. For both prophet and priest are what? Profane. Both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness. Therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness they shall be driven on and fall into them for i will bring evil upon them even the year of their judgment said the lord 13 and i have seen falling the prophets of samaria they prophesied in baal look up they prophesy in the name of who so not everybody that looks at you and says you are pastor alpha and you say yes sir the Bible says there are some prophets who prophesy and there are many of them in this country deceiving the sheep of God promising you all kinds of things I hope you are ready tonight I like the way God deals with you sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come then you receive it down and it keeps you down Let's hurry up. I have also seen the prophets in Jerusalem. So he was listing prophets everywhere. The men of God in Zaria. The ones in Abuja. The ones in Portacot. The ones in Wari. Then the legion of them in Lagos. They are here. The Bible is talking about them. He said an horrible thing. They commit adultery. And walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. There is no place like the church of Nigeria. 
where we strengthen the hands of evil doers any tom dick and harry can go anywhere loot from the national treasury enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor suddenly he becomes the holy spirit in the church directing the affairs of men the bible said they strengthen a man comes and meets a man of god and says ah i'm about to embark on a trip or do something prophesy to me let me tell you something do you know because you have an unction from the lord you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper but the lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify christ alone hallelujah he says that none doth return from his wickedness and they are all of them like sodom and its inhabitants like gomorrah therefore thus saith the lord of hosts concerning the prophets behold i will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of god for from the prophets of jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land 16 we we'll read to 19 and stop thus saith the lord of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you i hope you understand the context now it's talking about the false i like the way amplified puts it it says the false prophets he said don't mind the nonsense they are talking about doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds he said they make you vain and they speak a vision in their own heart and not out of the mouth of god everybody stands on stage i was sleeping this morning and the lord woke me up and all, the bible says they conceive that vision in their heart whose god is their belly that vision was brewed from the hunger in their belly and not from the voice of god verse 17 they say still to those who despise me in other words it shall be well with you people who are obviously perverting truth because they drop prophets offering they buy you a suit they take you to hawaii and you say it shall be well a man is stealing another man's wife you know it you are aware it shall be well the apostate church the lord had said you shall have peace that's what they are saying and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart no evil shall come upon you is that not what a lot of people want that's what we want that's what we run to church for man of god i came with a small offering then the man says bless you i see the lord is showing me something oh glory 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 and now you begin to jump let me tell you why i'm teaching you this because the bible says it didn't say they will diminish they will keep increasing and if the church of christ is not built to be grounded then there is trouble for us in nigeria 18 for who had stood in the council of the lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it hallelujah let me tell you something verse 20 let's read on the anger of the lord shall not return until i have executed until he had performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly verse 21 everybody read it together one to read yet they ran i have not spoken to them yet they prophesy is that in your bible or you removed it this morning he said i have not sent them joshua selma ministries international i was sent by jehovah jire jehovah all kinds of things they say my god and my king he spoke to me this morning he said build me a people and they are destroying the people he said i have not sent them yet they did what they are not even walking boy there are ministries running in this country one year they have established 30 branches everybody is running the same deceit the same perversion and god's people get ensnared gullible because satan knows how to lure you he uses your lust and your needs to lure you into a trap 
Satan knows you don't like ladies. You will not bring a woman to you. What for? It doesn't work like that. He's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs. Hallelujah. The apostate church. Some of you belong to these churches. Some of you have enjoyed the things that they do. They have taught us a lot of error. They have deceived a lot of God's people. Right now, everything in the church of the living God is money. Money can do everything. The front row is determined by how many money makers or partners. Your seed is equivalent to your faith. Let me, with time, I'll be showing you where these doctrines came from. Because God has been speaking to many of you, and there are many of you that are just waiting to finish ABU so that you establish that kind of ministry. You have planned it, you have calculated it, you have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month. You have you have drafted it, and so you are crying. They say fast and pray you will get power you are praying right now not because you love god it's part of the tools to add to the apostate church and i'm speaking to great men and women there's a lot of deviation from the truth of god's word and many of us have seen it we love it so much we like a congregation that comes to massage our evil doings and the house of god has been turned into a place of entertainment nothing wrong with joy in his presence there is fullness of joy not fullness of foolishness and stupidity hallelujah now, all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church there are football fans that sit in church seats kept for them Arsenal fans, man you. They give offering according to everything. They shout hallelujah according to their... What, what is going on in the body of Christ? How come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak? We laugh at these things and it's misleading us. There are men and women in the body of Christ whose job is to match make. The pastor's wife. It is the one she sees and she says, Sam, you are the head of worship. Uh, Zuera, you always smile every time Sam raises a song. You must marry him. Any other thing is not the counsel of God. Now, let me tell you something as you are laughing, make sure the Holy Spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit because it's happening. Hallelujah! We have all kinds of people. The church of God has become a dome for people to look for contracts. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry comes and tells the pastor he wants to sit down near this manager that comes and they say turn to your neighbor and say what do you do and the man of god let me tell you something judgment will come upon the house of god oh i assure you it will happen as surely as the lord lives that's why the church in this country has no voice politicians know where to run to for security they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed The Bible tells us that a day will come. Listen to me. I want you to know that a day will come. Jesus Christ is coming upon this earth. And I don't know who has deceived you. But I'm reversing that deceit tonight. There is something called judgment day. There are two kinds of judgment for your information. Let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach. Number one. There is the judgment that he who has not given his life to christ is already condemned those ones will not make heaven 
but there is the judgment that will judge the works of men are you listening to me so that one is among those who are already believers the word judgment should not scare you is bringing into accountability matthew 25 don't open it there's no time but i'm showing you that there is such a thing and the bible says to those found worthy in the age to come they will be made to rule over kingdoms hallelujah we have taught all men all kinds of things you are the god of yourself bring out the giant within you you are one with christ i like you to say i'm jesus everybody shouts i am jesus i like you to say i'm the galilean and they say i'm the galilean the doctrines that make the apostate church because this is exactly what satan did in ezekiel 28 he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god every time you sing a song and you say lord be magnified a lot of people say ah you're a new creation you should step into god push him he'll push you even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart say there's no need feeling bad come on walk up to that touch your your redemption your redemption or whatever you touch and and smile back and so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles let me tell you something there is judgment that is coming upon the house of god yes there is and it's going to come and it will start with we the men of god and it will spread down do you realize that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants not an outcast many people's giftings ministries and many things will fade before you you will see it come in the days to come many prophets will arise as before suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed for what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness you're writing exam 100 level malpractice took you to 200 level you say glory i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus what is your concept of the sacrifice of jesus christ can i tell you something when a man of god stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of god cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation we want things from god we want prosperity we want money and so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of god's life and so what happens we just sit down we don't do anything right now there are prophets in abuja that collect what we call battle seed you pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church so they pray you pay them on payrolls The man of God has prayer band praying for him and is there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist drinking juice changing every kind of thing trying all kinds of wine and then he comes his suit is fixed and he just flips through the scripture uh let's look at mark today he just shouts and for three hours of god's god giving time to his people stand there waste people's time you know how much i bought this suit you people don't know you are not yet in that level and people laugh let me tell you something it's time you begin to frown at some things are you listening to me because many of us they have become mentors unto us we love them we admire them every time we see them you imagine yourself marrying them that imagination is certainly not from the cross of christ and there's need for radical re-editing 
many of us sit down and you already listen they teach we young people all kinds of things get rich quick do everything breakthrough can come for you in one week i see my car look i know what faith is i'm not telling you that there is no place for faith i teach about faith here don't i but i'm telling you there is a straight line between faith and foolishness are you listening to me god sends the man to carry his tight and go and sow and he uses from the tight and the remaining 20 percent he comes and explains everything to you he says god is a merciful god just take this one and just use it and use malt and with this effort you are doing just use malt and wash your mouth as ah, ah, my son my son you laugh over it right now the poor in church don't have a voice they are the ones who don't have faith they are the ones who sit outside who is your father who is your mother they are apostate church we are laughing about it many of us are enjoying it many times they begin to teach us demonic things what they are teaching many people is what the bible calls new age new age new age they teach you all kinds of principles all in the name of the prophetic and many people truly begin to enter into the realm of the spirit and walk into all kinds of demonic things schools of prophecy where they gather people and pray and say now aaron what did you see you must tell us what you saw and then everybody truly begins to see every kind of thing and we use those things and pervert the body and you look at somebody who is not called into the fivefold ministry and say steve i see prophet in your name from today henceforth move in that in your might and steve is struggling because the grace is not there and then you tell him to amplify his prophetic by bringing a seed for you now he brought the seed how many of you have given seeds to fake people and you did not get the result everybody that blessed a true prophet of god in scripture received a prophet's reward many of our parents work hard only to come and vomit all the money in the presence of gullible and wicked prophets by the end of the month they are in your house they came for a prophetic instruction they gather everybody out how come people cannot think in the church a man of God looks at a lady and says, strip naked. Quickly, quickly, it's a prophetic instruction. And you see her hurrying up. Nonsense. The Bible lets us know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are you listening to me? A more sure word. It will not contradict the spirit of Christ. For the testimony, the testimony of Jesus is the true spirit, the motivation behind every prophetic word. many believers right now do not have time for them and god you know why we are busy busy trying to look for money busy trying to look for husband and wife busy trying to look for jobs busy trying to do everything the bible says seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness those values are no longer preached we men of God celebrate it when people join queues and they are waiting for the anointing and you see people as if Jesus didn't die for them too for hours they are helpless waiting for the stepping in of the man of faith and power Joshua Selman I'm not saying don't respect men of God but why have you made them gods to your life hallelujah a man marries his wife the man of God will not let them flog out their issues and enjoy issues. Everything that happens, she will come to tell the man. The day she's pregnant, the man will know before her husband. Let the husband go and eat the baby. Where are we going? The apostate church. Intelligent men and women become brainwashed in the church. And we begin to do all kinds of things. The Lord must arise and help us. 
are you listening to me the people have come to a point where we love it so we are not ready for growth and any minister of the gospel that stands for this truth unconsciously the seed has been planted and we begin to hate those people i believe in new creation reality I have been blessed. I believe it till death. I believe in the operation of faith. We talk to people and tell them nobody should die. When somebody dies, the church does not take responsibility. They say, go and bury the person. It's a shame to our church. We are the ones who live forever. And they leave the person sad, helpless going and he goes to meet his orthodox church that we always laugh at and then they are the one who conduct the funeral and laugh but let that person's business blossom and you will see claiming of members sheep stealing in the name of church planting everybody everybody becomes a son how come blind people are not spiritual sons to men of God but they are in our churches how come the ladies who are not fine are not submitting to the people everybody looks for the best the choicest and we yoke people with all kinds of demonic doctrines tonight there are two categories of people in this place those who will say and say this nudging in my spirit it has been there is a cry of the spirit and those who will just laugh you want true prosperity you want true power. There are many young people in this country that we have been taught that a process is as a result of lack of faith. So we teach people that now faith is, if your faith is working, the jeep should come now. And somebody in 200 level is converting jeeps, angry, he will not sit down and read his book. Just shouting because we have misled them. And a young man who has 50,000. That's all the money his poor parents gave him. He comes to school and we put them under pressure. Because he's the head of department. You must buy this suit with 45,000. To match our status. May God have mercy on his church. Some of you have been victims of what I'm saying. To a point that you are now enjoying it. The man of God may not be fake. But it does not justify the principles he's using. hallelujah and the Lord brings us to help us know him righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne many people right now every time you talk about Bible study a time of building in the word people begin to frown But once you talk of breakthrough night a night of receiving and taking take yours people say yes this is the kind of thing I like encounter with the spirit of Elijah then they'll put semicolon speed yes we like it everything that bypasses the process of greatness and can I tell you something many of our parents look at us although they are not filled with the holy ghost but heed some of the warnings they are giving they may say young man i may not know god oh but i know this is not how he works Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name Emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel and the church will see your holy face Emmanuel when you come to reign we do not have people who can stand for Christ and stand for truth they say if you cannot beat them, do what? Many of you are hoping to finish school now and run to Abuja. Your blood is already hot. 
final year project hi god let me finish this thing see i will shake the country so every time they are saying you are blessed in your mind what you are thinking is let me go and invade everything can someone walk up to you and drop five million naira over the integrity of your faith can you look at it without praying about it and say no i love god more than this don't be too quick to smile and nod your head because many generals who have fallen gullible were this confident are you listening to me where a man will steal another woman's wife and come to meet you and say pastor bless us uh, as a token of my appreciation i have one small one you are not doing introduction you're a man of god and so you tell them i love you but this is the position of the word of god and i will not compromise it may cost you your fame it may cost you your reputation you may not belong momentarily notice what i'm saying There are many of you right now on account of your faith people have called you stupid because you are doing the things that god wants you to do that guy wanted to go out with you and he was so rich but you went to the lord and god said no way and your friends insulted you they say you you are the most stupid lady we know in this day and age can't you collect his money and go what is there about him sleeping with you but then you stand for truth can i tell you something there is a name that god is called he's called the lord of sabaoth and he's about to step in and prove those who truly love him can i tell you what the lord showed me one time i shared it that the works of men were like heaps hallelujah somebody told me about it and then i forgot about it one day when the lord showed me it surprised me many men came to stand and their walks just like wheat in the harvest and fire just passed it and then you just see something little left that's the real thing that they are doing for the kingdom can i tell you something you can live and be a billionaire in this life you can live and be an influential person you can have a church membership of two billion people but it is only the degree to which you walk consistently with god that will make sense in the realm of the spirit are you listening to me so many of you who have been taught that god's way is just to make you a millionaire overnight calm down there is something called a process sow your seeds today build your life today many who cannot stay with the holy spirit you can't study for five minutes because you have been taught that you need to hurry up there is no hurry in this life you know why i'm saying that because those that have been moving according to god's pattern will turn and find out that they are ahead of those who have been deceiving them there are many churches and ministries you are seeing today the day their harvest begins to come it will shock you because they are laboring bearing root downwards there are many men of god you hear today i remember years ago years ago abu has changed years ago you see a man of god small grace you touch one sister and she falls you see one pa one pa one this one that i remember those times i used to be quiet and i would lock myself somewhere i was walking in the anointing walking in grace encounters with jesus but i knew the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing many people came with visions and prophecies josh we saw you in a tv station pfn remember pfn said they wanted to give us room to start eni 
in one of their branches all those things look like expansion in ministry but i knew that was not the season of appearing are you listening to me many of us have short-circuited our dealings and our trainings with the lord because we have been taught a false doctrine a false gospel when god is dealing with you and he has not finished you jump classes in the spirit now you come and establish a big ministry and those lessons you would have learned from the classes you jumped will bring you back and retrogress you in ministry even at the height of it every young man who can wear suit they just call him and say kneel down pour oil on him and say stand up i saw the gift of the spirit on you you are a, you are a pastor you are an apostle and now this guy just got born again six months ago and they say forget the harvest is why the babylon in him has not finished dying now he stands on stage and he sees lara very pretty lady and the old man cain is attempting to resurrect when abel is preaching and that guy is struggling on stage he's laughing then he says come into my office and tomorrow you hear that something happens and people will say how far moses stayed 40 years in the wilderness let me tell you something friends we must return to the order and the patterns of the spirit if we want to last and be great a lot of people do not go through the dealings of god suddenly one breakthrough comes they step into prosperity and they become fools the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them because they do not know the purpose of the blessings they were not taught are you listening to me tonight god is searching our hearts because he wants us not to be the apostate church there is a church like that in nigeria I don't mean a denomination i mean a group of people parading all kinds of beliefs the church is becoming a psychological thing right now you go to churches and you see the the drawing of anatomy and they're explaining every kind of thing your subconscious mind your inner conscious mind the other one that is there where you are hot information goes through this place what is your university for And then the man laughs and says, Ah, so this is the side of me that makes me like women. So it's not even bad. Hallelujah. And we try to teach people principles of metaphysics and Christian science, mind reading. A prophet just comes and says, Come, Josiah. And Josiah comes. He said, now everybody watch. Wave his hand and Josiah goes blind. And people say, wow. That is certainly not the spirit of Christ. Because among all the things that God gave man dominion over, man was not mentioned. Are you listening to me? So that we tread the path of destiny with care knowing the word of god herbalists have found out that they are running out of markets and they now have left their their herbal joints and one suit and say if you will not come to us we are coming there is a mountain in abuja i think manasseh will tell you when you go there they give you stones and you throw if by any means your stone does not hit the tree that you are trying to throw, you will know what brought you there. So you want to marry or you want this. They bring it. And, and you throw. And if he hits it, you will rejoice. A man of God says in the name of prophetic instruction, bring the photo of the lady or the guy you want to marry or the kind of job you want. They say bring it. Now there is a place for that. But this is where the boundary crosses. They say now, put your seed upon it and bring it. Put candle on top. Go around it seven times. Do all of this. Is that not what native doctors are doing? I don't care who is doing it. There is a name. It's called witchcraft and manipulation. It's a 
exactly what is going on. And many men of God are already building cabals. There is the cabal of the prosperous ones. There's the cabal of the handsome young men of God. There is their group. They are the ones who can shake ladies. When it's time to pray in tongues, they come and stand and do all kinds of nonsense. Tonight's message is ringing a bell in your spirit. We are going to pray. We have to be out of here. So, the apostate church. And there is a warning. It says that if you do not stay and you take on these doctrines, many churches have now become business centers. Different kinds of anointing oils, different kinds of breakthrough handkerchiefs, different kind of prophet's mantle. They line them before you while service is going on. And they tell everybody, just come according to your needs. But I know in my Bible that there was a time that a particular sorcerer, a man wanted to buy power from Peter. And he said, thy money perish. With you. I'm not saying don't buy tapes. Don't buy anointing oil. But if your purpose, I went somewhere and the man was marketing books. And he says that if you don't buy this book, something will happen to the people after three days. And you need to see the believers. Intelligent people, some doctors, everybody rushing. Why can't you just say, this is my work. I have labored. And you can honor me and honor what God is doing. Is that not honest enough? What is wrong with saying, Koinonia, um, if you consider me to be a servant of God, bless me. So come and stand and twist truth. The Bible says, handling the word of truth rightly. Men of God have gone to the extent of receiving all kinds of powers. There was a case in Kaduna. I'm sure some of you heard about it. The man of God that had a special anointing oil that he will rub on himself as he's stepping into the church. Come and see power, everybody falling. Because the Greeks seek for a sign. Hallelujah. And one day, he forgot to put the oil. And then when he came, he told his assistant to quickly run and check somewhere up and bring the oil. And it so happened because of morning service. The assistant pastor didn't take his bath. He would bath later on. And his body was white. He said, Kai, let me just quickly, this kind of embarrassment. And the guy just rubbed the oil. Small. As soon as the assistant entered, the power of God began to break out. And the Jew said, you touch that oil, Abby. Not fiction. Not fiction. To the point that the church of Christ cannot even know the difference between a true man of God and a false man of God. A right spirit and a wrong spirit. Anything God cannot give me, I cannot get from anybody. Anywhere he cannot take me, I cannot go. You must come to a point. The, the higher you go in the spirit, the more dependent you are on him and his word. He said, I love your word more than my necessary food. We must train a word carrying church. Hallelujah. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change. For your honesty in your job place you have not been promoted wait there will be the time of appearing let me tell you when god promotes you no man can demote you when a man promotes you you will need him to keep taking you higher but when the king of glory the one who watches over his word to perform it lifts you you are lifted forever there is a relationship between praying in tongues Staying seriously with God's word. Diligence. A life of purity and holiness. And the anointing of the spirit. When you see a man moving in the anointing. And you do not see these traits. Something is wrong. There is no guesswork about the anointing. There is no guesswork about the word of God. 
Are you getting blessed tonight? The apostate church. Tonight, many of us need to deliver ourselves from religiosity and traditions of men that stop us from stepping in. When we begin to examine the book of Revelation, we'll talk about the seven churches. And we'll examine everything that the Lord forbade in their lives. But tonight, my call is that judgment is coming upon the body. There is judgment that will come upon the body. And many churches will be affected. Many bishops will be affected. Many men of God will be affected. Many apostles, many prophets will be affected. Not because God is a wicked God. Because the people of God have been perverted from the ways of God. It's time for everyone to get up and know God for real know his ways let the word of god not just become an instrument of devotion for you in the morning they are life to those who find them it must become your life that you say if i perish i perish faith in the operation of god's word if god has said you are blessed you are blessed if god has said you are lifted you are lifted it doesn't matter what ab you tells you it doesn't matter what your parents tell you his anointing is upon your life. You may not look like it, but the word of God tells you. You stop running from pillar to post, looking for endorsements. The word has endorsed you. It has called you the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. We need a generation of men and women who when they come to bribe you, you will say no. No bribery. No corruption. Where if God takes you to a place of government, you will stand for truth. You will stand for justice. You will stand for equity at every cost. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. No bribery that you are seeing. You are in the exam hall. No malpractice. You know that you can copy and get an A and it will shift you from 2 to 2, two 1. And you say, no, I love the Lord. Not, it does not matter. My spirit is seated with Christ. My body is seated in hell. Hallelujah. Where you believe the Lord. Where you stand for what is true. The values of the kingdom. The church has become a secular place. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry that produces any album just jumps on your stage. And because we are looking for fame, we don't know the difference between Zion and Babylon again. The sacredness and the purity of the word of God and the songs of the Spirit. And by the way, let me correct what you are saying. Many of you say, eh, hey, he's talking about rappers. I love rappers. That are born again spirit filled people so let your religion not even think is what i'm talking about i'm not just talking of those singing him i'm talking of those who are truly born again filled with the holy spirit that christ has become the center of their lives that whether through raps through music whatever they know that they are not just musicians and guest artists using the church as a ladder to climb to greatness but that they love god for real that when they come out to minister i was listening to an interview by frank edwards i love him so much they say how do you write your songs he said i don't write my songs i spend time in the spirit and i receive them right now everybody wants to get money you just sit down and conjure one album Jesus, 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 you're my Lord, you're my Lord, Jesus, Jesus, and no life, death, standing and shaking itself in the church, and people are just nodding, they are just enjoying it, no life. No life. The person finishes his song and runs outside, and is laughing, he's saying, man, people should give me my honorarium, let me leave, I have another meeting somewhere. And say you must give me my money in this place so we'll drag this thing
Many of you are seated here. You are musicians. You are music ministers. The reason why God has not lifted you is because you have not listened to this message. Until he flogs out flesh and Babylon in you. Then the glory will begin to come by itself. We want a set. See, let me tell you why I shout and I say these things. Because now I have access to you. Tomorrow I may not have access to you. You will be too busy. So I kill it and bring it as hot as it is. So that you can listen. It can sink into your spirit. You may not like me. But tomorrow you will bless me. You will put my children in your school because you are happy. Your responsibility will make you a blessed man. There is nobody who laughs during training. It's only in the church people laugh during training. They are happy. They say you are lifting weight. You want to compete with the whole world. You are smiling. No. Go and watch the Olympic people. For the place of training is a place of sacrifice. Sister, I know you are pretty. But permit me to flog out Babylon. Flog it out. So that your beauty can be as gold. My brother, I know you are nice. Let me flog it out. By the time I do that, let me tell you something. You will stand strong. God can make you the entrepreneur. You will be the next or third or last and the rest. But then, you will be a strong person. This time around, you will be able to stand and tell the world, and say I love Jesus Christ next time some of you will be the bishops and you will remember you will not be some of the bishops we have in this country with all due respect you will know the difference between God and man if this is my only assignment on earth I am happy and I will do it honorably necessity is laid on me and the word burns in my spirit like fire. And I must bring it out as it is. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. Come out. The language tonight is come out from among them. Be ye separate. Don't adopt those philosophies. I'm not teaching you to be critical. That every time you go to a church. You are just trying to watch the mistakes of the man of God. No. 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 God does not use perfect people. His glory unwraps them and then brings them to a place of grace where they are dependent on His grace. However, there are some things that are not mistakes. It's called apostasy. The perversion of truth. Be careful the kind of men and women of God you allow to climb your stage. Men of God, be careful the kinds of meetings you allow. Now are not... This see, I don't go for any kind of ministration. Call it pride, call it whatever. People just come and meet you and through a phone, they say there's a meeting. Seven men of God are coming. Want you to come and honor them. The next thing you see your face in the middle of witches and wizards. They use your presence to endorse evil. So when people see you, they say, ah, if Joshua Selman can be here, that means these people are nice. Then after the meeting, the people say, Ah, I'm that Joshua Selman's friend. Come and meet me at home. And they say, Yes, sir. The same respect. That's what has been happening in a lot of churches. A lot of things. Because of honorarium. Everything. You just go. Because we are afraid of our reputation. You don't scrutinize and question. And make sure that everything is lined up in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. This teaching will make you strong. This teaching will make you great. I tell you the truth. It may not mean anything to you right now. But I assure you. In the days to come it will separate you. It will bring you grace. Listen to what I am telling you. It will bless you. I will not teach you what will destroy you. This may be a hard teaching. But can I tell you something? Hear the voice of the Lord tonight. One day you will know that a preacher was shouting truth into your spirit. Your spirit bears witness. As painful as it is, your spirit tells you I'm not lying to you. 
I will tell you what many men of God will not tell you. That's why we respect God in this place. We know the boundaries of offerings. We know the boundaries of character. We know the boundaries of everything. It's supposed to model to you something. We may not be the best of people, but we are certainly not the worst. And I hope that you see a desire to love God. Can your life be true? Can you be a replica of the true Jesus life? Can the anointing come upon you and the glory of God will still beautify you? Can God make you a millionaire and a billionaire and his kingdom will still be advanced? Can God make you an influential person in the government? Can God give you the anointing, the power you want? The fame, the influence, the charisma. Can God take you to the nations and still find your heart? Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Oh, Lord, we want to know your glory. We want to be the true church. We want to offer the sacrifice. Would you feel this temple, Lord? Feel this vessel, Lord, with your spirit once again. These are the kind of people that will step into prosperity. These are the kind of people who will step into charisma. The Lord told me something. I've said it here. That son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord told me. He said, if you let men see me. He said, if I be lifted up, not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia. Don't make Koinonia an idol. Don't make Ian an idol. Don't make Joshua Selman an idol. Or any of the ministers who are only ushers pointing you to the king of kings like john the baptist we are the voice of that word that cries we are preparing and making straight his way if you come for koinonia and all you end up doing is respecting joshua selman alone and loving him above god we have succeeded in manipulating you into witchcraft and idolatry and god will judge us for it we must lead you to the king of kings the one who is above all that all of us will stand before him it's our job to ensure that you are successful in this life that's why we teach you on wealth we teach you on prosperity we teach you on faith we teach you on the principles of success It's our goal that you become men and women of character that's why we teach you on the fruit of the spirit we teach you on the anointing we want you to move and operate in the miraculous and the supernatural that you be thoroughly grounded and established in truth will not be unaware of the devil's devices we are going to pray and cry our heart to the Lord and say Lord deliver the church in Nigeria and set us apart you are going to pray for your pastor you are going to pray for your man of God your bishops we are going to raise a cry you will pray for we the leaders and say Lord keep them keep them that 10 years from now we will still be preaching this truth that we are preaching and not allow jeeps and trips abroad and millions and billions rise up on your feet we are praying inside and outside begin to pray Pray and say, Lord, I come out from among them. 
I come out from among them in business, in ministry, pray, in governance. I come out from among them. I refuse to be part of the Babylon generation. I refuse to be part of the apostate church. That church that perverts truth, whose God is their belly. I'm driven by your passion alone. I'm driven by your passion. My heart pants for you in a dry and weary land. I love you more than ministry. I love you more than life itself. Pray. Say, Lord, I love you more than success, more than titles, more than CGPA, more than anointing, more than marriage, more than relationship. Lord, you have won my heart. There's no going back. In life and in death, you have won my heart. Go ahead and pray. Those of you in ministry, pray. I refuse to teach lies. I refuse to deceive God's people. I spend time with the word. I spend time in prayer. I get the Rema word of God. I stand for truth. I stand for righteousness. I stand for grace. That the anointing of the Spirit, that the prosperity of heaven, that the blessings of God will find expression. Pray. We are praying tonight. We come out from among them. We will not bow to bear. We will not mix fresh and salt water. We receive grace. 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 To be generous indeed. Grace. Generals indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, I dedicate my giftings, my skill, my ability to serve only you. Whether you are a musician, whether you are a celebrity, you are a five-pointer. Open your mouth. Say it. Don't look at me. Pray. Say, Lord, from today, I will never use my giftings, my anointings, my ability to serve Satan. No matter what it will cost me. No matter what it will cost me. In business, in ministry, in your family life. Pray. I live for Jesus. I serve him alone. I serve him alone. No compromise. Everything that is not of God, Lord, take it away from me. Whatever, any fame, any prosperity, anything that is not of God, any association, take it away. Let only Christ be glorified. Any marriage, any relationship, any friends, associations, groups, sects. I love you more than silver or gold. I mean it. I mean it when I love you. Hallelujah. God is raising the end time army of real Christians. And 
that's our job finally we are going to pray for the church in Nigeria pray for your pastor pray for your man of God pray for me pray for all the leaders say Lord keep them those who are already in apostasy don't condemn them but say Lord deliver them let light shine out of darkness come on pray Lord we pray for your servants let light shine out of darkness every man of God every church worker Lord we pray in Zaria in Kaduna in the north in Nigeria Lord we pray redeem their soul from the deceit of Babylon redeem their soul in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you we pray for every church in Zaria Lord that they will stand for truth we pray for the men of God money will not take the attention from you fame power charisma will not take your Lord step in in your mercy step in in your mercy and redeem the ministers redeem our businessmen redeem those in authority redeem our bishops our apostles our pastors our leaders that Christ the Lord will be Lord that we will love you above and beyond the things that you give us Hallelujah Hallelujah Listen to me I was coming in from Abuja this evening and while I was coming I was just talking with the driver only two of us and something happened a car just came nothing was wrong brake did not fail nothing happened this car just came to hit us and then it moved in front of us and rode right into a ditch i watched it it moved right into a ditch i just stretched my hands and i said lord mercy mercy that was all i was saying how that it happened nobody died in that car not even a scratch but i looked and the driver told me he said i've never seen a very strange guy like that and he was speaking to me a, a different person i took him from abuja and he was telling me he said shortly before this car came suddenly he had a vision just in a split second like an accident and then I told him I said there are some people that are too jealous in the hands of God God would rather a nation die for their sake this is the true basis of immunity in the kingdom not this I shall not die thing no there is how you can be so useful to God that God will swear by himself to defend you. Hallelujah. And while I prayed this morning, the Lord gave me a prophetic word to announce to the house. I never speak a thing until God tells me. The Lord told me something. He said, son, for half of this year, you have seen great grace. He said, tell the people to brace up for glory. Tell the people to brace up for glory you will see things that will happen in the next few weeks that will shock you will cause your ears to tingle if i be a servant of god and if i be called by god 
I prophesy this into your life and I declare that you will see it happen in your life you will see it happen in your family you will see it happen in your ministry the Lord told me to declare that it's a season beginning from this eight month an unprecedented level of glory of increase you will see prosperity like never before you will see expansion as a ministry as individuals in your businesses in your life in your academics i tell you the truth and i lie not the lord god of israel will confirm this in your life it's a season of glory that's what god told us at the beginning of this year he said great grace i'm not the kind of preacher that just sits down and laughs on the 31st and guesses what god is saying no it's in the bowels of much prayer and staying with the spirit if god does not tell me anything i have no business announcing things but let me tell you something you will see glory that will shock you i say this write it mark it if it does not happen i am not called of god the lord spoke to me this morning he said you have endured the season of great grace tell the people to brace up for glory brace up for glory you have trusted god you have enlarged your capacity we pray 21 days praying and fasting you have had the word i tell you prepare write it write it you will see it with your eyes shocking things will happen in this koinonia levels of grace you will hear men talk about it outside some will criticize it and say it's not of god some will say this kind of prosperity this increase cannot be from god but let it be that god declared it before the time lord we give you praise tonight we thank you for your grace we choose to be the true church deliver us all oh god from any form of apostasy let us be the true church oh i declare glory i hear it again in my spirit tell them it's a season of glory increase prosperity blessings restoration enlargement that's what the lord tells me to declare and i declare it as he speaks it into my spirit at work in my life depends on you my destiny depends on you my understanding depends on you the scope of my existence depends on you you're not one of the many things in my life you are everything in my life lift your voice and begin to worship him you are not one of the important things in my life Oh, I depend on you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. It says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Verse 7 of Proverbs says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. Lord, we depend on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to begin to recount all the things that would have not been possible in your life without him. It's important for you to see how relevant God is in your life. He's not one of those factors. He is the factor. Lift your voice. And say, Lord, my breath depends on you. I'm what I am by the grace of God. What I am by the wisdom of God. You are responsible for my understanding. If there is any crown, if there is any glory, if there is any accolade, it belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. Thank you. 
it all belongs to you. Oh, you as the factor beyond our minds, beyond our efforts, beyond that which we have learned to do. You are that one great reason why we are what we are, where we are, doing what we are doing. You are the wisdom behind this ministry. You are the grace behind our exploits. We acknowledge you. You are the mighty one. We depend on you and we will let the world know that our success is tied to our dependence on you. Keep us in that position, oh God, where we will never see the need to move out and do things without your presence, your guidance, your wisdom, your strength. In you we make our boast all day long. For without you we are nothing and we can do nothing. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for tonight again. We are gathered in the presence of the living God. Teach us. We submit to your wisdom. O oh, great rabbi of the ages, we submit to your wisdom. Build us. Teach us the principles of the kingdom. Bless us, O oh God, and lift us up. Let us, by revelation, rise to levels where we will become relevant. Thank you, Jesus. We vow to give you the glory because it truly belongs to you. Hallelujah. Lord, when we give you the glory, we do not do you a favor. We do ourselves the best of favors when we give you all the glory. We don't do it because we are doing you a favor. It's yours. It belongs to you. And we acknowledge you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everyone. Please walk up to three people. Just greet them and be seated. Sorry about the noise in the background. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. Prophesy to your life. Lord, you make all things new, yes, you make in your life. All things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time with faith in your spirit. Come on, prophesy. You in my life. voices just the voices can we prophesy say you
one more time. Declare it that is a prophecy to God's people. Come on now. You, you may call this new year. Yes, you may call this new and I will follow you forward. Lord, go ahead and change that which needs to be changed in our lives. Make all things new. For we cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. So change the wine skin, O oh God, to be consistent with that which you are doing in our lives. And take the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I start tonight, I'd like us to, in one minute, pray for the family and the ministry of Dr. Miles Munro. And, um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International. Hallelujah. He passed on to glory together with his wife in a plane crash. Praise the Lord. And um, it's very sad because Dr. Miles has been the pivot of the revelation of the kingdom life in my life and destiny. One book that I read, Discovering Your Purpose, Your Potentials, I read that book and I made a vow that I was going to affect my generation. And he's one man that I have come to love. He has mentored my life. He has changed my mindset. And um, part of my goals for next year was to have a personal session with him. And so it broke my heart badly when I heard he had gone to be with the Lord. But one thing Dr. Miles said in his lifetime, he said the greatest tragedy on earth is not death, but a life without purpose. I can tell you that he died empty. He released his mindset in books and he set up institutions that will continue his ideologies. I was teaching the School of Ministry students yesterday and um, we're considering a course called Personal Transformation. And we're examining the concept of life and how that it is not so much about the amount of time you spend in your life as it is about the quality of the impact that you make. First, advancing the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity. He consulted for governments. One man who was able to create the balance between the secular realm and the spiritual realm, he stood as a bridge and blessed both realms without compromise. And one of the last messages that he preached before he died was how to die effectively. He taught men how to die. These are men who have cheated death. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the grave. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine in South Africa, nor the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq, the Middle East but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies. Anointings that would have liberated nations. And miles before his death and all through his lifetime, it became his conviction. And he said, disappoint the grave. Disappoint the grave. And although it was a tragic event, but he had already prepared to cheat death long. The Bible says, so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Can we rise in one minute and pray for Cairo and Carissa, the two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general. Generals in the faith. These are men that Hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of. They came with ideologies that conquered this system. They brought Babylon to its knees. They were prosperous from the earthly point of view. They were successful and yet they were relevant. Pivotal to the the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time. 
they cheated death they reigned in life these are men who even in the grave speak louder than those who are alive bless them lord we thank you for giving the earth the gift of dr miles and ruth and dr richard pinder and all the membership of the bahamas faith ministries international we thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations they fought the fight they ran the race they poured their lives like drink offerings we are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships lord we thank you lord we pray that you comfort the ministry comfort the membership we pray the entire nation of bahamas in the name of jesus we pray that you will bless them all the sons and the daughters and men and women of god that he left behind i pray that they will pick up that button and run in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that there will be no discouragement and lord through his life give us wisdom that we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you thank you very much please be seated Hallelujah. I want to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a great time. Uh, we traveled, but God was faithful. I hear the meeting was powerful. The messages were powerful. God bless you. And the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the Spirit, the Bible says, surely there is an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has truly been... Um, an amazing year for many it's been a tragic year and um, but in all of these things we thank God and I want to just share with us something that I consider is very pivotal at this point of our lives I want to share tonight on the power of hope very simple message but it will bless you the power of hope Job chapter 6 verse 11. When we look around our world today and um, we see the complexities of, um, of living in today's world ranging from terrorism to um, corruption and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty, and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our lives. And here in Nigeria, we've had our toll of the share of pain. Family members have lost loved ones. And a lot has happened in our lives. Many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other. And it's important that we understand the concept of hope. And tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6, verse 11. Now, when you study theologically the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time, the dispensation with which the book was written. Because... Uh, contextually the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis somewhere around there and theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book uh, it is generally agreed that it would take someone who 
is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very um, accurately. Because the book of Job begins telling us about a man, a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came. And uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because uh, it's one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists come into a church or a meeting and bomb it? Why? What is the contemplation? What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of questions. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business, he lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. And while he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God and that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting was held again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well, a man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now, that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and buffet a man? Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs will come and lick his sores. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicaments, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you are a sinner. And Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Eli who said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was little. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been there. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here's the solution. My recommendation to this situation is that you curse God and die. And 
Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, Job's humanity, this is the part that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures in the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king, you rule and you reign. And then the face of a calf. And it symbolizes the servanthood of God expressed in the person of Jesus. Which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king, but we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man, which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are, times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things. Perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow me? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? Every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was happening. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Where are you? Times can come in our lives. Listen to me. When our humanities will probe God and will demand explanations. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? So Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord, I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is I demand you? At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your mercies are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened? Why was my father sacked? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Mm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, he sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray. Something is wrong. Pray. I think a guy or a lady. I don't know exactly who. And then 
One morning I was on my way to travel and then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, you should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated. And he spoke. He said, where is my strength? That I should hope. And what is my end. That I should prolong my life. In other words. Is it not better for me to die. What good is it. Now I'm alive. I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for. I have spent my entire life. For. It's gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust and dogs, dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9, please. Chapter 14, verse 7 and 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Bible. Job 14, verse 7. Okay, let me just stand here. Job 14. You can just stand so that save time. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. It was the same Job speaking. Mm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life, you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said he dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. Say, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you're watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God, I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry, told his wife, I'm sorry, and said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. 
He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. He didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. Mm. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said, rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said, at 31, nobody has gone to school. He said, rejoice not. There is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not see. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time, let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You make all things new, yes. Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life and so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. 
I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three. Hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now, there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So, I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports that I know, that I know, that I know that I may be SS now but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle but I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism i keep my spirit high because i know that things will change i may not see it it may not look like it as at now the job has not come i've been a graduate for 10 years no job i've been a man of god for 20 years and there are just 20 members and i love god sincerely the ministry is not growing finance is not coming influence is not increasing Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures and darkness, Hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength. It gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going. Even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord when there are all kinds of things happening? Why should I keep hoping on God when believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation? Why should I keep being optimistic when it's been years and decades there's not been any graduate in our family? In a world that is full of uncertainties, Hallelujah. 
uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainties. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus. Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him. It was based on that. That Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear. Because he said you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said Jesus. I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma? In the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory. It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for a tree. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, Terrible things in righteousness. They, they watch the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry. We know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? They said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness. We thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainty. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves and he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives. Because Paul lived very long. 
when he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us Standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boisterous storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock. Sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you alive. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is, the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they say, who against all hope, believed in hope. Against all hope, Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope so hope is the pillar one of the pillars upon which faith stands I'm very quickly I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight there are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. It said looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life that must keep us optimistic in life. That must keep us assured in life. Is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance. That no matter what happens. Even if this body is destroyed. There is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the School of Ministry students yesterday and we were really considering the subject of life. We're actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. 
The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were opened. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were opened. And another book was opened. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. Ah. I like the Bible. No bribery, no political party. Whosoever's name was not found, you will carry your flag, carry your, your, your senatorial district, carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me? There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come, let me tell you, every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those 
who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world, the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Listen. Do charity. Have a big ministry. Be on air. Organize crusades if you wish. If you do not have this blessed hope. In five minutes, when your life evaporates like a vapor, you have wasted your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We consider everything else in our life, but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope. Many of us, it's a shame that for many pastors, this is not even a theme of our messages again. I'm going to talk about other aspects. And we're going to pray and speak over ourselves. But first and foremost, I owe a responsibility and I told God, our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. I rather leave somebody, listen, listen. Look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh-uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole but this man is innocent and jesus looked at him and said this day my goodness my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him can you imagine that barabbas stood near the king of kings the one who could give him blessed hope yet he did not have it judas is carried was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope. Yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. The blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you're afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates. And one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper, rapture entertainment newsletter. He said he's, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen then. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. 
when he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here. Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? And Sammy, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games. Brothers and sisters, whether you are poor or rich, right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please let this be a solemn moment I am, I, am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now hallelujah there are people here who are said man of God I love the Lord I have served the Lord some of you may even be preachers but you are saying sincerely I am not sure that that blessed hope there is a condition for it to happen the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. 
believes in him will not perish but have eternal life there are people here some of you you have been around church you you do a lot of spiritual things and you have believed that that is a justification we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem and our hope and all our pains will be no more we will stand and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore oh this is the destiny of the church we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem our hope and all our fears will be no more and we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you evermore right now as we sing this song wherever you are inside and outside you need to come and surrender to jesus i like you to passionately like a man running away from fire find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now the moment we raise this song i like you to come mean business with him we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem all our pain and all our fears will be no more don't sit back deceiving yourself we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore we will stand in the golden city Jerusalem And we will And cry holy is the Lamb We will worship and adore you forevermore For the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. and adore you forevermore the saints will see him holy 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 he's the lamb that's what we will sing at his feet holy 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 he's the lamb oh when this life is over that's a song holy 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 they that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's feet. Where He will tell us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this. That I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. 
We will worship and adore. Listen. Even if you live to 120 years, hear me. You are not going to die young. Don't be afraid. This is not a funeral service. We have a covenant of life and prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, even if you live 200 years, one of the interesting things in the Bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say, and he died. He still died. Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what. There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul. Talk to him. He died for you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners. As you pray, I want you to think about your life in one minute. And tell yourself it's over. Enough of playing games. And for all of us who are standing, don't think because you are standing, it means you should not reflect. Please, in one minute, I'd like everybody to reflect on your life. Am I living my life in a way that if I see it being replayed, I will be glad I lived that way? Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you are under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were opened. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. Pray. Those of you in front, pray. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you died for me. I return to you now. I return to you. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God. Just the voices, I'd like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Jesus, he said, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Whosoever believes in him, hallelujah. Those of you in front, I'd like you to say after me from the depths of your heart, I never forget this day. Some of you are rededicating yourself. Some of you are truly surrendering all. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender every aspect of my life completely to you. 
I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child, I return home. To you, the lover of my soul. I return to you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me new. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. That when this life is over, I will have that blessed hope. I declare today that I willingly, consciously make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me keep me from falling it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the power and thine is the glory keep me from falling that I will serve you all my life that I will serve you all my life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near And I can hear the sound of the trumpet so loud When the dead in Christ shall rise again And we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication I've taken God serious all my life and I want to encourage us Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest.
and peace and love forever where there will be no wars no terrorism no hunger no issue of jam and wayek no issue of corruption and death and sickness and that is our blessed hope hallelujah absolutely The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, or having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? going to get to that scripture first Timothy I, I think we'll get there we'll get there let me just skip it the second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life hope in this life so our hope is not just in heaven alone we have hope even in this life hallelujah First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. First Timothy media, if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is jesus speaking to the to the disciples said no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms he said but he will receive in this life this and that and that and then in the life to come life everlasting there are issues in our life today that we're discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals we can push through the walls of limitations we can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances these are the two dimensions of hope one is the blessed hope at the return of our lord jesus christ and the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now praise the lord now very quickly what is the basis for hope what is the biblical basis for hope let's start with our blessed hope that means what is the foundation what is the assurance what is the condition what is the basis on which we have our hope the blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis 
for my spending eternity with God. The basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two. What gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelations 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to 5. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse 5. He said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate. He said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, right for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die? What gives us assurance that you will build the house? What gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life, you will emerge a champion? What gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact. I call them the attributes of God. There are three attributes of God that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. 
So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not project it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make, nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God, the first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. Kabushaka. Mm. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect. And to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, he can restore. In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it. Just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry, meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. 
hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer, he was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know you have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word, and that word came, passed through the astral realm, and went, and the word like a meter, and it saw the spirit of Lazarus, and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those great clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asked you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asked you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen. 
I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained, but in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen, you are... You have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny, many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost can't go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst, but God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboy preached a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. And let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop you. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. 
Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen, the palmer worm and the caterpillar. I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We are going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And, and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top verse 7 therefore he said take it up to you and he took his hand I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names in a way and a manner you never expected to happen my God will show up for you before the end of this month in the name that is above all names i'm speaking to you there are things that you have lost and only god can give you i stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down listen look at me the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is i hope you understand how many of us can state um i think that's the first law of thermodynamics right what does it say 
Huh? Energy can neither be what? Nor destroy. Is that true? That means the concept of disappearance is a mirage. It only leaves your sight, but it's somewhere there. Hmm. The bones were scattered, but when the master spoke, they found themselves. You would have thought it's over. Hear me? Let me tell you something. Armed robbers came to your house and they stole. You do not see what they've carried. But there are many kinds of it in the earth. And when the master steps up as a restorer, you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life. And when God restores, he does not give you what you lost. He gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it. That's what restoration is. If God just gives you what you lost, it's called progress, not restoration. Until God gives you plus the balance on top. He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life, is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time. He can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46, 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We we'll read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drank, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed 43. And all of that, he told his servant, go and check until seven times 44. All the time, while those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. He was already moving ahead. The Bible says, it came to pass that behold, there arises a little cloud like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, okay, right here. Sorry, I, I got it wrong. This is the point where he told Ahab, prepare your chariot, get it down, uh, that the rain stopped in us. So, now he started running. Verse 45. Ah, kabona kataya. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far. But the man of God was there, no help. 46. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran on barefoot. Come on, say speed. A man on barefoot started running. He said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel. So it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is, God can, God can give speed to your feet. And you will run and in one month, you will do what has taken men 10 years. 10 years. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it is possible. When God quickens, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration. The Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side, they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him. Is that true? And the Bible says he stayed to pray. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking. And within a short time, he caught up with them. And he was about to overtake them. They thought he was a ghost. And he walked on water. It doesn't have to be the normal process. When God steps in, he can break protocols. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. But our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10. Project verse 6 to 10 for us. John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10. 
The Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana. And the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding. It probably took them days to make wine. But that wine finished. They needed a miracle. And something happened. It says, and there were there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three, this and that. And then verse 7. And Jesus said, fill the water pots. It does not have to undergo the process of fermentation. There is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen. Come on now. Ah, yes, you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. No enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste. Nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine, so on the way it became wine at once. And he knew not whence it was. He said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse comes. In other words, people give their best at the first time. But he said, why have you kept the good wine until now? There is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar, i think he did his whole his whole project within a short time because they later canceled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh god will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to Jesus Christ. Total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things, you will be with Jesus forever. I call it the master hope. The master hope. When you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have ultimately activated hope. Scriptural references. Romans 5 verse 2. Don't project. Romans 5 verse 2 and then 1 John 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life so total surrender to the lordship of jesus number two how do we activate hope the power of testimonies the power of testimonies the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 the power of testimonies Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives. Testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners. So every time I testify of what God has done in my life, it activates hope. So someone who is about giving up just hears that God did this. And he says, if God did it, then I will still hold on. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 16 says, Come and hear all ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I will declare it. I will declare it. In Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39. Just give us verse 39. Luke chapter 8 from verse 39. But the whole context is 26 to 39. The Bible speaks to us about the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. 
the madman in Gadara, after he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say, submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission on the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there. Steve String said, that's it. Steve Strings went around seven times. That list came out. His name was there because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result, but you have kept quiet. Hallelujah. One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in. I think he should be around here. And he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you will stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath. To preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. 
the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the of the Syrian army he was a great man but he was leprous hallelujah and when they sent him with a letter the prophet gave an instruction go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan and that was it the scripture we just shared in 2nd Kings chapter 6 the restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God listen to me when a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a terror a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that i'd like you to write ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 we've read the scripture the valley of dry bones it happened to the prophet of god the prophet of god gave an instruction every time you are in need of hope you are in need of change among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of god he said and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so i destroyed the land because there was no man the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that god plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope men who god stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the last verse. Hosea chapter 12, the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. He said, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By what? A prophet. Now hold on. It is true that God delivered the people. But their hopes were shattered until a man showed up. They never, it is true that there was a prophecy that there would be deliverance for them. But nothing happened until a man, Moses, showed up. The moment that prophet of God appeared, hope was brought back to life. When they saw him, he gathered them and said, people, begin to prepare. You are days away from this captivity and you'll be out. And he went and challenged that 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 god called pharaoh bishop oyedeko said prophets are territorial commanders his exact word now it may sound arrogant but it is not it's an election of grace when god calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women 
but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible said, believe the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophet as 84 years she had been in the temple waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet. He came. Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born. By a prophet he came. By a prophet he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do without it hallelujah we are going to pray we'll pray these three prayer points and i'll be prophesying from the depth of my heart let hope arise rise up on your feet let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light just sing it once or twice and then I speak about our lives. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. I like you to see the hopeless situation before you and sing this song to his face. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Oh, it will change. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. For the last time now, let hope rise. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, you are a creator. I need a creative miracle in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Can I have some prayer people behind the mic, please? We have five minutes to pray. Lord, I need a creative miracle. Oh, she brought a ticket. I need a creative miracle. I need a Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. Mention every area where the devil has taken anything and say, Lord, tonight, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration. In finances. Restoration. In family. Oh, 
Command restoration of opportunities. Command restoration in your academics. Command restoration in your home. Command restoration in your ministry. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, grant feet, speed to my feet. Listen, listen. Lord, before December, let me accomplish what I have not done from January to now. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Give me speed. If you pray from your heart, God will answer. If you pray from your heart, God will surprise you. If you pray from your heart, supernatural accomplishment by an anointing and the heart of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand and the hand so protect the God in one month you will do in my life and do my life what has not been done in ten months? Lord, in one month, in one month, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. In one month, oh, in one month, you will do it in my health. In one month, you will do it in my health. In one month, you will do it in my finances. What has not been done in ten months? Hallelujah. 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 We are still going to pray that prayer point. I'd like you to mention three things that you want to see done before miracle service this month. If you believe, listen, if you don't have faith, it's okay. You can stand aside. Just be praying in tongues as we pray. But if I am releasing my faith with you, that three things you are telling God, Lord. I hold on to hope that between now and miracle service week, do it for me. If you believe God, lift your voice and pray. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. Lord, we believe you. We are believers in this house. 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 You have done it before. You will do it again. You have done it before. You will do it again. We agree as a house that before miracle service, three things, mighty things, mighty visitations, you will do in our life. Three things, mighty things. We believe you. We believe you. Pray. God will do it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will do it. My God will do it. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. I told you the third key 
is the true apostolic and prophetic ministry brothers and sisters i don't know what your expectations are but i know that for god to have brought this message there are people who need a miracle desperately and it will take a prophetic word in the name of the lord jesus in the name that is above all names if you take me as a servant of god in the name that is above all names i speak over the situation that has challenged your life if i be a man of god between now and the end of this month it must answer to the name of jesus Amen. it must answer to the name of jesus Amen. it must answer to the Amen. name of jesus it must answer Amen. to the name of jesus Amen. i come tonight in the name of the lord the captain of our salvation i come in the name of the one who is the multi-breasted one who said is there anything too hard and i invoke the powers of the heavens i decree and declare in the name that is above all names lord i prophesy let miracles erupt in the lives of your people let miracles erupt in the lives of your people receive financial miracles in one month someone here will get a financial harvest Amen. that january to october has not given you i prophesy it in the name of jesus in one month someone will give you a gift before miracle service that no Amen. man has given you in your entire life Amen. for someone here you will share a testimony from home that you have never had all your life Amen. hallelujah there are some of us who have been trusting god for specific things and as it is humanly speaking it doesn't look like you have what it takes to get it but in the name of jesus may the hand of the lord come upon you tonight Amen. and i prophesy speed i prophesy speed i prophesy speed in the name of jesus and every power and every force that frustrates the rising of hope in your life in the name of jesus i come under the anointing of the spirit i challenge those powers and i command them to let you go now the bible says by a prophet they were preserved i command that you are preserved Amen. you're going out and coming in is blessed we will not hear any report of death death we speak to you anywhere you see one of these ones we command you to stay clear Amen. in the name of the lord jesus and every fear of death every fear of failure that is in you that makes you think you will not see the end of the year the bible says by a prophet they were preserved i command that you are preserved in the name of the lord jesus christ the god that brought you to 2014 will take you into 2015. thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence or all these that wasted in noonday i command that you are preserved the seal of the blood is upon you every altar that invokes your name will invoke fire upon them in the name of the lord jesus every coven every altar that invokes your name or that of your family members what will show up is the fire of the holy ghost be blessed in the name of jesus everything these hands that are lifted said to do i pray in the name of jesus may they prosper Amen. those of you who are walking i prophesy that these two months will be the best time you have had walking this year in the name of the lord jesus thank you jesus those who are trusting god students for where the school fees of next session will come from before miracle service you have your school fees in your account Amen. In the name of the lord jesus we provoke the ministry of destiny help us before miracle service you return with your testimonies hallelujah
Lord Jesus, we give you praise. This is your first time worshiping with us here. This is Koinonia and we love you wherever you are. Please make your way to the front right now. We want to pray for you very quickly. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how far inside and outside, God bless you. You are most welcome. You're most welcome. Let's keep standing. We're rounding up. Let's keep standing, please. Let's keep standing. God bless you. Keep coming. Make your way to the front. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same, I guarantee you. Your life will never be the same. We want to pray and bless you.